Hi, welcome to On The Line, and I'm your host, Britton New One Carter. We'd like to welcome you to our second edition this season, which promises to be a great season. 2017 was fantastic, and 2018 promises to be more so. And tonight, as evidence of that, we have a great guest with us tonight. But before we get to that, let me remind you as to how to follow us. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at On The Line TV Show. You can also reach us if you want to interact with us by, ha by contacting us on Twitter at hashtag WatchOnTheLine. Tonight we have with us a guy who I've been trying to, to get on the set of On The Line for some time. He's an author. He's a renowned motivational speaker, and he also is the CEO of his own company here in Cincinnati, which is called I Have a Dream Academy. <laughs> this guy is none other than Mr. Deron Smith. Thank you for being here, Deron. Oh man, we finally did it. We got it. We finally we put it, it together. We're here. We're here. I tell you what, persistence in God's time, you man, is always good. Absolutely. And, you, and you know, this, this is on the line, Deron. So I, I like to keep it on the line and up front with, with my studio audience. There it is. And so I got to give them the real. We've been there chasing each there other and playing tag back and forth for the last, what, two years yeah, now? It's been a trying few. to Trying to link up and do some things. And ironically enough, after our show with Punchy Lee, uh, we saw each other at, what was it, Thornton's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was absolutely. Thornton's. And, and we made this thing come together. So he contacted uh, our producer who uh, Nahamani is just, she's great. She's fantastic, and she put this thing together. So I'm so grateful for you being here today. Hey, hey shout out to uh, Nahamani as well. So yeah. uh, again, man, just honored that uh, we finally uh, finally connected. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to be sitting here and uh, ready to get this thing popping. Right. I'm going to ask you some questions, but one thing about it, Nahamani, you better quit getting people that dress better than me on this show, okay? <laughs> The brother is shy. <laughs> so I learned from the best. That's what it is. <laughs> so let, let's get right to it. Tell us, who is Deron Smith? And you know what? He comes with the uh, a myriad of, uh, of personalities and peoples. Today, I can honestly say that Deron Smith is a is a loyal, uh, a man who walks in his, in his integrity, uh, a person with with uh, just mass compassion mm -hmm. and passion for. Uh, people, but predominantly our youth, right. and and it's that it's that it's that youth passion that uh, makes me chase chase the dream that uh, leads me up to this point. And uh, that being said, is what shaped and made me into who I am today, man. And and, and that's that's so fitting uh, for your company. I have a dream, you know. Uh, uh, and it, it's really ironic that you you use that phrase. Uh, I, I'm quite sure some of the inspiration was from Dr. King. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that and how you got the inspiration in it for your company? Yeah, it, it definitely, but I, I, I will have to uh, just kind of elaborate on the company. The actual title is I Dream Academy. I Dream Academy. I Dream okay. Academy. We are mentoring and development. But the dream is, is definitely synonymous to uh, the dream, right. period. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King inspired because that dream is hope. And what's happening is um, it's, it's hopelessness that's okay. uh, killing us more right. so than anything. And so even when I was going through my phases of um, just development, bro, it, it was the hope that kept me moving forward. Right. So what was your development like? Talk a little bit about the earlier days and how you got wow. to the stage. Yeah, we talk. Yeah, now we're talking about some movement, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I believe scarred, man. Um, I think a product of our environment sometimes can play a, a huge role in the mm -hmm. dynamics of the course we take out in life. Um, and I was no exception. Right. Uh, as a product of that environment, uh, coming up in a household where um, I saw, was introduced and exposed to uh, alcohol, uh, early on, um, 
parents, you know how when they used to have those house parties back in the days. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they were doing it, right? Yes, Lord. I mean, you couldn't do nothing but get excited about right. it. Right. So every weekend you knew what was coming up. So right. as, a, as, a, as a number seven child of eight, there was eight of us. Uh, well, at that time, it was six above me. But as number seven, um, being able to see the house party just yeah, inundated with, with, with alcohol and parties and stuff like, like that, that was exciting. Right. And so being exposed to the alcohol at such early age, um, who knew that it would create a, a monster? Right. Uh, so growing up in that, I, and then that environment also produced uh, an atmosphere of uh, uh, chaos, mm -hmm. and I'd say uh, unhealthiness, uh, because I grew up in a domestic violence home. Okay. And so it's no mystery that uh, even in my book, Innocence of a Child, I share these things because I want people to see the um, how trauma can play a role in many forms absolutely and you know absolutely. and I think that a, a lot of times people don't understand that emotional trauma can exist and what happened with me although I didn't have any physical battery um, the, the disconnect from a male figure positive figure that that gave me any comfort or any validity or value in being um, acknowledged as son Right. Or confirmed, right. um, so I really didn't have that model growing up, so I didn't know what that what a man's love was. Right. Period. And, so and, the and chaos and, and the domestic violence was a key factor. Right. And while we're there, you know, you you've already alluded to your book, and this is his book, Innocence of a Child, by Deron Smith. And in in your book, I was reading. It's so interesting. I found a uh, something I like to share with our audience, and it says. The two distinctive attitudes still manage to collide more often than not. Dad holding to his tenacious belief of my way or the highway attitude, while mom doing her best to live the life of a devout Christian began chastising him by way of biblical doctrine, which made him even angrier. Mom's Mom stated in fury of how hard it was to live biblically steadfast in the world of God with so much opposition, a change must come, she exclaimed. Man, how powerful, how powerful. Listen, it, you know, he's going to give us some information as to how to obtain these books, but I'm telling you, if you get a chance to read this, it's a great read, and you're going to need to get this book. Get a hold of this book and read it. Uh, you know, everything, and just that passage alone, just that paragraph alone. How many times have we heard uh, in our homes, it's my way or the highway? Come you on, know, man. So, you know, right. you, you have to be out by 18. <laughs> and every, everybody in my household by 18, that was a magic number. Right. So period. So there's a there's a other passage in there when I'm uh, about to graduate and the fear of knowing I'm not ready. And so in that in that um, in that chapter, it reads, um, here I am being thrust into the world, it seems unprepared and unequipped wow. to what to what I was about to face. Wow. Une unequipped and unprepared. But yet my legal uh, age of a man is 18. Right. But my mental and my preparation stage was still a child. How resounding is that, you know, and, and it's echoing and yeah. what's going on in society Absolutely. today uh, with our youth. That's and how yeah, fast I mean, they grow it's, up. It's, right. It, it's prevalent today. Except mm -hmm. they, you know, they didn't have, and even though we had chaos, mm -hmm. you know, I think that you, you and I can agree that even with the chaos, there was a, a, a bond of family there. You know, where you had the father and the mother in the house, even though it was some dysfunction going mm -hmm. on, they was there. Uh -huh. And, you know, they had this this love. You know, today, often our kids are, many of our kids, mm -hmm. and you can testify mm -hmm. to this, are left uh, being the parent, being yeah, both the parent and the child. Absolutely. You know, they're, um, you know, particularly when you find a youth that's selling drugs, yeah. oftentimes he's doing so, so he could take care of the family. Mm -hmm. And you work as well mm -hmm. uh, with the court system, with juveniles. Mm -hmm. You know, talk a little bit about what you see in, in that atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. And again, tying it back into innocence of a child is exactly what I'm witnessing with today's time and what I do now for a living. 
um, in working with the uh, the our judicial systems and uh, the uh, school systems and so forth, um, absentee fathers, right. um, probably ninety percent of the population on service and uh, single parent female households. Right. Uh, you know that's one of the issues that we're facing right now. That model is broken out. So even though um, dad was the way he was, he was a fixture in the home. He still had a platform. He still had a base of uh, what a role would look like in a man, even right. though some of it was unhealthy. Today, it's not even there. 90% of the women, if not more, um, are raising the little boys. Right. So that right. creates another issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we were discussing, I was discussing part of the role that I do now is trauma being emotional, as I said. Yeah, a lot of our young men are being exposed to trauma, traumatic experience or trauma based off, based off emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. emasculated, emasculated from being a young boy called punks, called this, called that. Uh, Self-esteem is low at an all-time low. Mm -hmm. So those are traumatic experiences mm -hmm. from that, 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 you know, that plays a role in our, in our youth development today. And in dealing with those kids, we're witnessing it acted out in the behaviors of now uh, connecting to the juvenile justice center. Uh, kids are catching cases out there. They stand out in the streets at 12 and 13 years old. Right. Uh, down in our 2020s, uh, at our other youth facilities. Right. All because, one, the model of that, that household structure has collapsed. And then, two, again, the emotional breakdowns of whatever these child these kids are um, experiencing right. up in their life is playing a role. Hence going into that innocence being stripped out at such an early age that we're seeing the results of it manifested at some point. Right. Being replaced with misinformation, um, that being in the system at such an early age at such an early is age. what manhood is about, is is what promotes me as a as a man. With, with many of our youth, you know, and, and we see this, and as you said, mm -hmm. we see this play out day in and day out. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see it in our youth when they're standing on the corner with their pants sagging, uh, carrying mm -hmm. guns, selling drugs. You know, and, and not all our youth, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, go that way. But for those, and we're talking about for yeah. those that, that are, you know, who Absolutely. we need to, uh, to reach. Mm -hmm. And it's so great that a brother like yourself uh, is out there on the front lines, keeping it on the line, and reaching out for our youth, bro. You know, I you know, like to commend you. I hear, thank you, thank you, brother. And and again, likewise yourself, I, I extend that. And you know, we're dealing with so many uh, abnormalities out in our in our arena, in our right. communities, that our abnormal looks appears normal to our young people. Wow, speak, brother. You know, because the mental health piece. There it is. The mental health piece is is missed in our communities. Yeah. Completely, completely. And so here it is, living in a world where, where that abnormal is that normal, that's what we're up against. Um, and then again, innocence being stripped off in whatever form it can, you know, it was dismissed. And then with being reshaped and replaced with this ideological type of perspective and viewpoint of this is what, again, the uh, definition of what manhood looks like, right. um, respect looks like, right. because now they're taking lives just at the bat, up at the drop of a dime because you're saying you're disrespecting me. Right. So now life has no value. Right. You know, and, and, and hatred or self-hatred breeds hatred. Right. Hurting people hurt people. You know, so the trauma that's going on within our, our, our communities is a cycle that's continuing from, hence when I pinned the words to innocence of a child, growing up as this angry kid, introduced to all these things uh, these um, elements that makes our community um, explosive. Right. And I became a product of the community. And that's what happens. Right. Because it's such a norm, I, I just blended in with the norm and became a product, which wow. took me down the road of a couple of penitentiary numbers, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. strung out on drugs, just to kind of segue into that. Mm -hmm. Because it's important to hear the history right. of what got exactly. me into... I Dream Academy today, right. you know, and because of the, the roles that were played in my household, um, I didn't know how to handle those, you know, and most children don't. So what we do, we, we become reactionary. We act out. And we act out. We act out. So we experimented. I got higher and higher. 
right. you know, about right. it. I medicated. Right. Me, exactly. my partners, right. and, and, and birds of a feather flock together. That's right. So you're going to gravitate towards the next That's like-minded. Right. That's right. So here we are at, at, at 7, taking our first drink. By 11, we're smoking weed, and 11, you know, lacing it with cocaine, and by 12, I'm in the seventh grade drinking already. Right. You know, high school, I went through it. In the ninth grade, I'm already in the stadium for cocaine. You know, mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. wilding out. Now we're robbing, right. we're banging, we're doing all this other stuff, mm -hmm. all because of the bitterness and the hatred. That, and then, I would even say this, God, Brett. I've learned that I lived life based off my perception of it. Okay. Meaning, it had no value to me. Right. So I lived it and approached it regularly without value. Right. Well, it surely has value today. And one of the, th the things, just listening to you, you know, we talk a lot about our males and, you know, their position in society. But, you know, more often now than not, I'm thinking about our young sisters and how this transmits to them. What mm -hmm. happens to them in the household when they're absent of a father? What happens, in, yeah. what happens to them when they have to find out uh, their idea of what a man mm -hmm. in their life should look like or, or whatever their love interest right. is? You know, where do they get these ideas from? And, you know, is it shaped as a, as, as a result of the same trauma that's happening to the males? Does it also happen with, with our young sisters? I believe so. I definitely believe so because if a uh, a male in the household isn't giving her the uh, the first impression of how she's supposed to be treated or spoken to, uh, then she's not going to have a standard to measure it by. Mm. Bottom line, and what's happening is that absent father from the female is just as important equally as it is with that male because now she's going to accept the being disrespected. She's going to accept what she's seeing coming into the household sometimes That's a right. drive by. Right. She's going to accept right. that, and again, it becomes, that's her norm. Right. That's, that's the norm. So it's, a, it's vitally critical, important, equally, that in order for our women to have, find that self-place, that self-esteem level, the male in that parent, that household is, is, is critical in her life. He, she, he, dad or that male figure should be the first uh, measure or model mm -hmm. to how she's supposed to be treated. Right. A date okay. spoken to. Right. Cherished right. queen, she should know where she stands by his by his viewpoint. Absolutely. Other than that, she's out there accepting everything else that she's not supposed to take. Absolutely, I remember early on, and, and that's great, and I'm glad that you pointed that out. That's so great. So, sisters, you, you heard it from the brother. You know, you don't have to be devalued. You know, absolutely, you have value. Um, we were talking some time ago, and I remember you. You don't. You probably don't remember yeah. uh, mentioning this, but you've been to cities such as New York. Right. You had a, a stint in New York. Uh, what was happening during that time? Of your oh life? wow, I was wilding. Yeah. I, I was wilding out. I was. I was bugging for real. Yeah. Um, it all stems from back here, and then going into the military, and then meeting my meeting my wife. And and, and long story short. Uh, I got on drugs, mm -hmm. and so when I moved to the East Coast, I was in, in uh, uh, Maryland, stationed in military intelligence uh, brigade. Um, met my wife, and um, she's out of Hartford, Connecticut. So we was rolling back, living through New York, um, going up and down the East Coast, right. doing a lot of um, illegal mm -hmm. uh, stuff, right. but getting high. Right. Uh, we were at that. We were at our crack phase, really, really, really embedded in, in, in dope. I literally went off AWOL from the military for about right. two weeks, right. and uh, they called back to Cincinnati to try to track me down. But I was in New York. I was in Brooklyn crack houses, right. and um, just, just again, just running up and down from Hartford to uh, New York, and then kind of all the way through DC and Maryland. Right. And, and, and it was just, it was just dark. Those was, was some dark, 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 like dark times. Yeah. Jamaicans yeah. and Puerto Ricans and all that other. Right, life, so. right. You know, what I find fascinating, uh, I can remember a brother telling me um, a, a parable, and it was about the, the Prophet Muhammad. They were saying how he was uh, the Quran walking, you know. So I, I, I believe with every biblical book, and when we talk about uh, Abraham, any biblical personality in the book, what I find that they exemplified was they were that book 
in the flesh. There it is. Brother. There it is. Brother. If they don't get a chance to read any other book, you need to check this brother out and read him. Because the brother is truly truthful and this innocence of a child and the way that he turned his life around. This brother is the book walking and he shows you in his daily walk. Because I see you, brother. You know I be seeing you. I be around the corner of people. The brother is is the book walking. He's the truth. You know, and we we need to have uh, examples uh, uh, for our community, not just our youth, but for all our community that second chances, third chances, you know, chances do exist. And Absolutely. You, you just have to take a hold of the chance and just ride. This brother's riding his dream. Amen. I love it. I hey, love I, it. And I salute you and I respect that. And in and, 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 uh, respects to, to that. Um, innocence of a child is 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 an overcomer. Mm-hmm. It's a story of overcoming, and so, so I want to make sure that the uh, that that the viewers and listeners and everyone understand that innocence can be restored. Mm-hmm. And so when I wrote it, it wasn't. It's not a a, a, a dead. It ends here. Right. Type right, story. Right. 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 It it talks about how the innocence were the pureness. And when I when I wrote innocence, the word that I chose was purity. That's what it meant. Okay. It's, it's at what point did I stop seeing the world as beautiful? Right. That was all about the perception. And we as adults still, so overcoming that, I found that even as an adult, if I haven't dealt with that piece, I can still be an adult suffering from my childhood wounds. Absolutely. And Sweet. until that's healed, mm-hmm. and so that's why Innocence of a Child is a book overcoming and restoration. And so when I had to go through those journeys and... Um, again, because of my, my, my criminal behaviors and everything else, I ended up incarcerated. I ended up with two penitentiary numbers. Uh, mm-hmm. My second one was uh, the longest stint of 14 years they gave me. I ended up doing seven straight. Mm-hmm. I went from using drugs to being one of the key players in the game. Never used, never drank, never did anything, and ended up going to penitentiary. They gave me 14 years. Mm-hmm. That's when I decided that some changes needed to be made. I went back into soul searching. And, and so being that we all have that pathway, and again, as you said, that walking book, we all have that walking book goal, opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so what I did was went back down memory lane to deal with some of the things that I knew was going to be a barrier for me to move forward. And I started my own medicine process, so to speak. So to say this, it's a book of overcoming and restoration. Right. And that's what we, I want people to realize is that you got a story to tell. Right. How are you going to tell it? Tell your story, bro. Tell your story. So you, you heard it from the man. Tell your story. You know, I think it is imperative that we all tell our stories. Uh, the more of us that share our stories, uh, uh, you got to be walking the walk, though. You got to be walking the walk. Don't just share a story and you walking around with God. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, because we got enough of that out there. Yeah. But we we need our community leaders. You know, and that's another right. thing. You know, uh, the, the election that, that just passed, I watched a, a lot of our frontline runners who who I believe were frontline runners mm-hmm. that actually uh, didn't get elected into office. But they were people who I saw uh, out here on the line Frontline runners, I mean, just out here daily, walking the walk, uh, talking the talk, and doing the thing. They were leading by example. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kelly Prather, Michelle Dillingham. You know, those those people, uh, Michelle and Kelly went hard in the paint. I'm telling you, you know, they They went hard in the paint. And they're out here. And the thing that um, I respect about both of those candidates is that they're constantly out here, and they're still out here. You know, yeah. uh, someone once told me that some leaders are appointed, mm-hmm. but true leaders, true leaders are born. There it is. You're a true leader, bro. <laughs> You're a true leader, bro. And, Thank you, bro. you know, now. I wanted to get you and Aaron on the show together, you know, and so <laughs> if AP, if AP, when you see this AP, I want you to hey. know you had hey. your opportunity to be right there too, because hey, AP is doing man. some great stuff. Yes, he, he, he is, and, and to, to salute uh, those two uh, soldierettes that you mentioned too, right. and I wanted to just give this to them, they're consistent. Persistent. Yeah, persistent and consistent. And, and what, exactly. what was really impressive is that they're going to make a platform. They didn't need a platform 
of, of a certain status. They, they're going to create a platform for themselves because mm -hmm. they're consistent and they're doing it from, the, from being assigned to do that, right. you know, not for show. It's, right. deep, it's deeper than that. Those, it's passion inside those, those two people you mentioned. A absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. Part of it. and, 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 you know, the, you know we talked about tr trauma briefly. Uh, and, you know, trauma-informed care is a yeah. big thing that's mm -hmm. going around. And Dr. Victor Garcia, yeah. Ali Rashid, yourself, mm -hmm. and others, you know, uh, we're, uh, we're at this thing. We're at yeah. this trauma. Thing. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. you know, uh, I think that it's important. You know, I talk about uh, the coming together in, in terms of artists, you know, poets, singers, whatever. We need mm -hmm. to do that in terms of getting this trauma-informed care off the ground, we need to, to have a forum and really, really campaign to get this because that's what's exactly. happening in our communities. It's, it's often misplaced and it's trauma that's affecting our communities. Mm -hmm. And we need to do something about it. Yes, this so brother's so. on the front line. Uh, what we got left, we got two minutes left. I'm gonna give you this two minutes to talk about where we can find this book at, how can we yeah, follow definitely. you? Yeah, definitely appreciate it. Um, the agency we also servicing is that, uh, again, with iDream Academy, just wanted to kind of give you a little bit more information about that. It's a mentoring, mentoring mm -hmm. and development where we work on social emotional development, social skills, but we do it through uh, intern programs, field trips, martial arts, boxing, so all kinds of development uh, pieces that big, we're going to play that role. We dig, we dig in deep to help these young men and these young women actually find something they can connect to. So we expose them into, to a lot. They can go bowling, they can do Dave and Busters, they can do what have you. Right. Um, that's that. As Innocence of a Child, you can order the book, go to www.idreamacademy.org. Right. Idreamacademy.org, or you can call our office at 513-482-7038. Again, that's 513-482-7038. Hey. Well, it's been fantastic, bro. It's been fantastic. I love man. having you on the show, man. You gonna come back? Uh, anytime you call me, coming we, back. We made it happen on this go round. Okay, uh, y'all heard it here. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna hold the brother to it. Hey, listen, this is B New One Carter, and they get they're telling me I got to wrap this thing up. I hope you're having a great and prosperous 2018. Stay live. Keep it on the line. Care about somebody. Care about somebody. But most of all care about yourself. Peace.